Before we get into this video, I just want to say that whoever started that Instagram account called Savage with Cindy, that was a choice. And I don't know if it was the right choice, but it made me laugh, so good job. Anyway, back onto the video. In my TBR video, I tried to be really lazy and crappy with my reading challenges by trying to cut corners, but even then I failed at doing that because I didn't combine any of the books. I forgot my seventh book. So I failed at making my TBR a failure, which in a way makes it a fail. So obviously I had really low expectations coming into Booktubeathon, but surprisingly, I ended up completing all seven books. I mean, it's not really surprising since I picked like really short books and also graphic novels, but it was surprising to me because my standards of myself are very low. So yes, I won Booktubeathon, but did I really win? Like, what am I getting out of this? What was the whole point of doing this? So that I can stress myself out? So that 10 people I don't know on the internet can say congratulations? So that I can feel a sense of accomplishment? Sure. Anyway, the point is that I did it, so I might as well do a wrap up about it. I also didn't do any of the book challenges, so I'm just gonna insert like really quick clips of me doing them at the very end of this video. That part will truly be the laziest and crappiest part of what I do in Booktubeathon. So I guess I'll go in chronological order. The first book that I read is Marbles and oh actually let me backtrack a little bit. Let me just give some background information about where my headspace was at the start of Booktubeathon. It was the stroke of midnight and I assume at this point everybody started reading their first book right away but for me I was still finishing up Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo because I had been procrastinating on reading it all week because I didn't want it to end. So I ended up finishing that book at 2 a.m. and I ended up crying until 3 a.m. I was emotionally destroyed and then a few hours later when it was daytime I filmed a whole book review about it. It wasn't really a book review it was more like of an emotional breakdown and that is not clickbait because I literally started crying throughout the video. Like if you watch it you'll be like, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? Obviously, I was in a very emotionally fragile state. I didn't want to read any books. I just wanted time to grieve over the six people that I've lost. But that night, I knew I had to start on it. So I forced myself to read Marbles by Ellen Forney, which is a graphic novel about an illustrator with depression, which in a way is very fitting because I was also very depressed after reading Crooked Kingdom. Literally the first few pages that I started reading this, on page seven, I got to this part. The author was talking about this whole tangent she went on and one of her friends is named Kaz. <laughs> Honestly, she should have put a trigger warning because I was not ready for that. But still, I persisted and I read through the book anyway. I liked her honesty and her humor when she was talking about her journey dealing with depression and bipolar disorder. I'll show you guys some of my favorite pages. I think this one right here is a fucking mood. Like if you stripped away my outer human shell, this is probably what I would look like on the inside. Actually, it's probably how I look like on the outside too. So yeah, anyway. Relatable. I also liked this part here. Um, this is basically what I want to do every single day. So again, very relatable. I also liked this part here where she was talking about how when she was dealing with her mental issues, she got completely lost into books. When I had finished the last page, I would be half surprised and so disappointed to find myself back in the joyless reality of my apartment. Honestly, that is such a mood. So yeah, there were a lot of parts that I thought were relatable, but ultimately I gave this three stars. The reason why I didn't rate it any higher is because I feel like she could have gone more in depth with her struggles and more in depth about the ups and downs of dealing with mental health. Instead, I feel like a lot of what was covered was kind of on the surface level. And if she had gone deeper into it, I think that would have been more impactful. But of course, since it is her own personal story, she's not obligated to really share anything deeper than that, and that's okay. And another thing that I kind of wish she did, she did this whole series of abstract doodles in a way when she was in the lowest part of her mental health journey. And I really liked looking at them. This one here is my favorite one, because once again, mood. These are taken directly from her notebook that she kept while she was dealing with all of that. And I kind of feel like seeing those more abstract drawings kind of helps explain what she was going through rather than just straightforward comic panels. So yeah, three stars. And I think if you deal with mental health issues, this would be a nice light book to read. And then the next book that I read is Your Story Is Your Power by Elle Luna. This book was for the reading challenge where you pick a book 
that talks about what you want to do. So obviously the book is very beautiful. It has a lot of really nice watercolor drawings. I thought it had a pretty promising start. Um, it had like a few good messages about being more emotionally intuitive with yourself. The majority of it turned out to be too hippy-dippy for my taste. Like it started describing feminine power as this mystical force. The author started talking about the various dreams that they've had and then attributing it to foreign religions that I definitely know they don't follow. For example, there this is one part where she talks about how she kept on dreaming about spiders. The Navajo culture spider woman was known for saving humans from monsters and enemies and taught them the art of weaving on the loom. In the Lakota tradition, spider webs catch dreams. According to Choctaw mythology, a grandmother spider stole fire from the people in the east for her people and safely carried it back to them. In the Hopi tradition, spider woman is the goddess of the earth and sang everything into worldly existence. I realized that for me, the spider represents my intimidating feminine side. I mean, I guess. <laughs> or it could just be a dream, I don't fucking know. I mean, if you want to make sense of your life by analyzing your dreams, that's fine. But I think for me, it was just too hippy dippy for my taste. I gave it two stars because I found most of it to be very flowery prose with not much substance. I have a coworker who's really into this stuff, so I actually recommended this book to her. However, now she thinks that I'm really into these books too, because literally today she gave me two books. One is by the same author, and then the other is a book that I already read last year, and I gave it one star. So, yay! And the next book that I read that covered the beautiful spine challenge was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I actually really liked the first half of this book. I thought it was a really good book to choose for a booktubeathon because it was super easy to read through, and some of the fantasy tropes were very familiar to me, so it was kind of like reading comfort food in a sense. But then the second half really lost me because it just went into a whole bunch of nonsense. So I thought this book was a very quintessential three stars because it had a lot of potential, but the execution didn't stick it to the landing. I'm gonna do a separate video review about this because one, I want to make fun of the book, and two, there were actually a lot of criticisms about the book where a lot of people said it was problematic, which I actually don't agree with, and I'm usually the first person who says whether something is problematic. I actually did not agree with some of the criticisms, so I kind of want to talk about that. The next book I read was Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This was the book that I chose for the challenge where you had to read a book to movie adaptation and then watch it. I rated it two stars. I was really not a fan of this book at all. It felt like a short story that the author later decided to add a bunch of padded writing onto it in order to make it a novel. And yet despite padding it with a bunch of stream of consciousness writing, the book still somehow ended up being very inconclusive and overly cryptic, which I know is the point because he's trying to have this really creepy atmosphere, but it really didn't work for me because even like all the emotional points or all the creepy points that he tried to put in, I didn't feel affected by it at all. As for the movie, I only watched the trailer because booktube never stated that you can't watch the trailer. So I cheated a little bit in that sense, but you know what? When I saw the trailer, it was nothing like the book anyway, and I still wasn't interested in it. I saw that the book was pretty split between people who really liked it and people who really thought it was boring, and I'm definitely in the latter half of that. Then the next book that I read is a really short one called The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. I also rated this book two stars. I don't know if I'm just being overly critical of books, but in my defense, I think that makes the books that I do rate five stars even better. It was hard to rate this one because it's so short, but ultimately I don't think that the story was as impactful as the author intended. I thought it was mildly interesting, but that's about it. This is how the book started. I didn't stop giving hand jobs because I wasn't good at it. I stopped giving hand jobs because I was the best at it. For three years, I gave the best hand job in the tri-state area. The key is to not overthink it. If you start worrying about technique, if you begin analyzing blah 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 blah. Like for the next two pages, she talks about how she gives hand jobs to a bunch of men. The main character is also supposed to be very scrappy and clever, but I actually didn't buy that from her at all. I just thought it was like being edgy for the sake of being edgy. And I don't care about that shit. Just give me a good story. Like you don't have to try to shock me. It was all right. I just liked that it was short. Then the last two books that I read were the first two volumes of The Substitutes Count. And I'm not even gonna rate those books because if you just look at the covers, 
it's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> I don't think I can rate it because I don't even consider this to be literature. Oh my god. I just realized that I read these two volumes without wearing a hat, which was one of the challenges that I picked for this damn book. So I basically failed Booktubeathon. I I did all of that reading for for nothing cuz I I didn't finish it. I did <laughs> I didn't even follow the damn rules. Oh my god, I'm such a fucking idiot. Ah, fuck my life. Okay, so now on to the booktube challenges. This is going to be really quick and crappy, so buckle up. First challenge is book attack. I think for this one, you just gather random stuff and make like a book cover out of it. So for this, I'm going to do Ulysses by James Joyce. Next few challenges require you constructing something out of the books that you have. I decided I'm gonna do this with only the books that I own instead of library books or books I borrow from other people. I only own two books. One of them is a book that my boss gave me and then the other one is The Hazelwood, which I only won from a giveaway. Here's my take on the second challenge, which is to create a house made of books. Here's my take on the third challenge, which is to create book dominoes. Here's my take on the fourth challenge, which is to create a bookshelf of books. Fifth challenge is to dress up as a book cover or a character. So for that, I'm gonna dress up as Inan from Children of Blood and Bone. Get it? Because Inan is trash. Sixth challenge is to create spine poetry using only books of the same color. And then the seventh challenge is to talk about your favorite book and why it's your favorite. And I'm gonna be that basic bitch and choose Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I'm just gonna film this separately because I need to go back to work right now. Hi, I'm back. I'm gonna do this vlog style because a lot of Booktubeathon was vlogging. So since I did the challenges, since I read the books, I might as well do some kind of vlog too, even if it's really lazy and half-assed, just so that it feels more complete. Listen, I know that I had just read the book. I know that I had just cried about it. It looks like I'm just picking this book because I had recently read it. And that may be true, but just, just fucking listen, okay? There are books that are just objectively good. They're timeless, they're classics, they got a lot of awards. Those are the books that are objectively good. And then there are books that, whether or not they are objectively good, they have emotionally impacted you in some way. And to me, I've never had a book that fulfilled the second half of that equation until I read Crooked Kingdom. Obviously, some of you saw my Crooked Kingdom video where I cried my eyes out about it, and I've never really cried over a book before, at least not to the crazy extent that I did with Crooked Kingdom. And I think there were reasons why I had been so impacted by that book. So I started reading Six of Crows when I was in a bad mental state. I mean, I'm always in a bad mental state, but like this one was particularly pretty bad. I, I was in a pretty low point in my depression. This is getting like way too deep. I'm not trying to bum you out. I'm just trying to like explain something. It's probably obvious that I'm going through some shit because of my tragic lack of skincare routine. So when I read Six of Crows, it was kind of like this escapism for me. It was a very solid book. It had like a lot of fun world building, a lot of fun characters. So it was pretty solid. When I read Crooked Kingdom though, <sighs> there was just something about it that really struck a chord in me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just crazy, I don't know, that's that's probably it. But what took Cricket Kingdom to the next level for me was because a lot of the themes and a lot of the emotional journeys that the characters went through have resonated with me on an emotional level. Particularly Inej, um, the main female character, she has been through a lot of trauma and pain throughout her life. And despite all that bullshit, she still remains strong and kind. And I just, I don't know, it just, it made me feel some type of way. It didn't trivialize the bad shit that was happening in the world. It didn't trivialize the trauma that she went through. I thought it was very realistic depiction that despite the terrible things that she had done and despite the terrible things that had happened to her, she still wants to move on with this sense of courage and the sense of strength. And she wants to believe in change for herself and for the world and Kaz included too. His life is also fucking shit. When I see all of these characters that have been through such 
terrible, terrible things happen to them and still they persist and still they want to continue surviving in this world and wanting to improve this world. That, I don't know, it just, it makes me feel some type of way. It makes me feel like with my bullshit, which is so trivial compared to what they go through, I want to believe that I can also change as a person and that I can also change for the better, just like all of these characters are going through. And I think that's why I was crying like a little bitch in that Crooked Kingdom video. And I know it's stupid and I know it's just a book and maybe I'll change my mind in like a few months or in a few years or whatever. But right now, at this very moment, this is how I feel about the book. I'm not saying it's like the best book ever. I'm not saying that it's flawless and that it's perfect and I don't want to overhype the book either. I can totally see people like reading the sequel and not enjoying it as much as I did or being underwhelmed by it or not even liking it and that is totally okay. But for me, the time frame that I'm in right now and the headspace I'm in right now, that is just the kind of impact that, has, that it has left on me and I haven't had a book that has made me feel that way like at all. Basically, I'm just another basic bitch <laughs> for this series and that's okay. And I know it's stupid, but you know what? I just, I fucking need this right now <laughs> in my life, okay? I'm just, I'm trying to get by. And if a book makes it a little bit better or if a book puts things into perspective for me, then I say that's pretty good. This vlog is so terrible. I'm trying to find like a good angle for me with this vlog, but like no angle looks good. And I think, that's not the camera's fault, that's just my genetics. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching this vlog if you have somehow made it to the end. I don't blame you if you stopped watching, so. We will resume to our regular content pretty soon. Ew, I can't believe I said content. This is not content, by the way. This is just secondhand embarrassment. But I do have a lot of videos that I wanna make pretty soon. I have like a couple of book reviews that I wanna talk about, even though book reviews are the least popular on booktube, but I don't give a fuck because I just wanna talk about books. But in my next video, I have something fun planned that I'm excited to film. It's not a book tag or a book haul or a book review. It's gonna be a game. It's a stupid game that I made up, but if you like the Lunar Chronicles and if you like memes, I think you will like this video. I don't know. I think it'll be fun though. That is it. I want to end this vlog and stop vlogging forever because my arm hurts and every angle on my face is bad and this whole thing is bad. Thanks for watching. I will see you later. Bye. Oh, no! Oh, no!